the News Channel 5 Network. This is On The Line. Hi, everyone. Rory Johnston here. Welcome to Open Line on a Monday night here on News Channel 5 Plus. We're uh, so glad you've joined us because tonight we're going to talk about jobs. And if you're out there looking for a job, uh, a new career, or perhaps are without a job right now, uh, this is the program to watch because uh, we have a couple of great guests and we're going to talk specifically about workforce development. Um, not just the state of Tennessee, but specifically here in Metro and the mayor's local hire initiative. We're going to explain what all that is about. So 737 plus is the phone number. As always, you regular viewers know what the routine is. If you'd like to call in, we'll put you on hold and, and get you on the air just as soon as possible. I want to welcome Paul Haynes, Executive Director of Middle Tennessee Workforce Board and also with Nashville Career Advancement Center. Paul, thank you for being here. Thank you for Appreciate having. it. And Ashford Hughes is here. He is mayor's, uh, Mayor Barry's senior advisor on labor and workforce development. So thanks for being here on that. Thank you for having me. Like I said when I came in on a dreary Monday night, at least we're a little warm in here. Let's talk a little bit, guys, about the, this local workforce uh, initiative. Uh, this was a charter amendment that passed. Um, it, explain a little bit what the charter amendment, the, the meaning behind it, uh, what the concerns were with so much construction going on in Nashville and especially in the core. Well, the charter amendment, um, was an initiative founded by the organization NOAA, Nashville Organized for Action and Hope, uh, which is a 48-member faith-based group. And originally, I was a member of NOAA before mm -hmm. I came to work with the uh, mayor's office. Mm -hmm. And what we saw was that, exactly like you said, there were so many uh, construction cranes up. There was so much economics mm -hmm. happening in this city, but everybody wasn't feeling it. So what we wanted to put forward was something that got people engaged in the construction industry right now. <clears throat> so what the Charter Amendment calls for is that on all Metro-funded projects, over $100,000, that 40% of those local work hours go to local Davidson County residents. Also with the caveat of a best faith effort to make certain that 10% of, of those hours go to low-income Davidson County workers. Right. Why was there a concern? Were a lot of these construction companies hiring from outside Nashville? Uh, what was the typical, the trend that we were seeing? We saw uh, some of that as well, especially on some of the larger scale projects that were happening. We also just saw that in uh, certain areas, in certain uh, council districts across the city, we had very high unemployment rates. Mm -hmm. Specifically in District 19, where we have some areas with 20 to 40 percent unemployment, but that's the area where most of the construction work is going on right now. Right. Uh, we have those individuals that said and needed to get into the construction industry, so this is a way that we wanted to get that ball rolling. And Paul, this is really uh, a way to kind of tap into folks who live right there, so close. Correct. Uh, and let them be in, not only involved and be able to, to see a project and say, tell their kids someday, I worked on that building or I helped, I, I did some type of work, whether it's a prep work or post or during the construction. Um, that's a sense of civic pride in of itself, but then obviously for people who've been out of work, to earn a pretty decent wage depending on your skill level. Right, right. And I think that's one of the key components of, of Mayor Berry's, uh, process of rolling this out is uh, it has a jobs component to it. it yeah. It's designed to help match uh, skilled folks with employers who need the skilled mm -hmm. work and it also helps uh, as it rolls out we'll be helping individuals who don't have the skills gain the skills necessary for entry level. Yeah, and work. that's key that we want to talk about a little bit because there was pushback uh, on the the amendment, even though it was it was uh, supported, uh, the voters supported it and passed it. Um, that pushback from construction industry and builders who basically said, "What?" Well, s some of what we heard was that right now they didn't feel that they had the workforce to be able to attain uh, the forty percent. Um, they thought that some of the uh, companies thought that we would be hindering outside. Uh, contracting companies to come in from other counties around the area to participate mm -hmm. in what's going on here. Uh, but as we saw when we started this implementation process, once we really got everybody and all these stakeholders around to the table, we all came to one key uh, understanding, is that the construction industry needs more trained construction workers and they need a more uh, 
concentrated effort on uh, training individuals here locally uh, to really attain those jobs. And that was something that the mayor has made it clear in the campaign as well as afterwards that that is what she's going to strive to do uh, with workforce development in our city. How uh, challenging is it to, for this initiative to begin? Uh, you know, there's certain things that have to take place. There's a lot of coordination among various agencies, correct? Well, that's what we feel, this partnership that we have now with the Nashville Career Advancement Center and Paul's organization, we feel like that is going to be the first step to really put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. uh, what we feel we have with this partnership is an agency that was already doing some of this at the state level, but now we get to come in and really kind of put a, a micro-targeted area on it. We also get to use and work with our Nashville Workforce Network as well as NOAA, our community partners to have them do the outreach to bring the community residents into Nashville Career Advancement Center to get the training to match them up with an employer, a, con a construction worker that needs those jobs and actually give them an opportunity right. to get hired on. Paul, give us a little background for, for the uh, Nashville Career Advancement Center. <coughs> what is it about and its the origins? The Nashville Career Advancement Center is a metro agency yeah. that is formed as a regional entity to operate federal workforce development programs in a four county region. So okay. we operate in Davidson, Rutherford, Wilson, and Trousdale counties in Middle Tennessee. Uh, we provide adult and dislocated worker services along with youth services to individuals who, uh, for youth, those who were trying to enter the workforce or go on to further mm -hmm. education. For the adult and dislocated worker, uh, those who are trying to gain skills or those who just need a new job. We do the adult and dislocated worker programs are operated through the America's Job Centers or Tennessee Career Centers, mm -hmm. uh, if you will, for Nashville that is located at 655 Main Street Drive and Metro Center. So you're federally funded? Correct. We okay. are a federally funded organization. Uh, we, the Department of Labor and Workforce Development at the state is uh, our grantor. Right. So someone walks into that center, what are they going to find? just in, in general? If they walk in, we have a resource room where they can sit down and, and uh, file for jobs, do their resume. Uh, we've got counselors on site that can help them uh, develop a career path. Uh, we'll bring employers in a couple of times a week and do many job fairs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have networking events there that go on on a routine basis where people who are seeking work to network uh, with other individuals seeking and with employers who come to the area. Uh, and we have a scholarship program, Workforce Board Scholarship Program for those who are eligible. Uh, we will actually provide funding for them to go back to school. How hard is it to tell people to get get people actually in the door that's the key you're talking about community outreach and there may be some people out there who have all sorts of personal issues going on and they've been out of work and they're down on their luck and they're feeling like I, I just can't do it and I don't have the wherewithal uh, I don't want to learn I'm not going to be able to learn whatever new skill um, how do you break through that well that's what we're hoping once again this partnership shows our community when we work with organizations like NOAA that are in some of our church homes that are also in some of our uh, labor organizations. Uh, people want to feel hope and we feel right. this is another way to provide hope to say you know me with this organization we're reaching out to you because we not only have a partnership with NCAC the mayor is making this a priority of hers right. to make certain that we give outreach to pull you back into this industry. The mayor, along with Paul and everybody that sat around this table for these last three and a half months, we want those individuals to come in and to be a part of this because the construction industry needs the trained workers. A lot of individuals in our community, they need this career ladder out of poverty, out of unemployment right now. Sure. So we hope to, that NOAA and the Nashville Workforce Network will be that vehicle to really churn the wheels going forward. How long of a process could it be for some, some of the people coming in and, and maybe getting the training that they need for specific construction work? Paul, you want to? Just depends on their level of experience, it, it right? Mm -hmm. How and much it, training they need. And I think what's critical, Roy, to make sure that as we move forward with this, like many of the initiatives we have that are sector based, is it's learning from the employer. What do you need? What right. are those things that you were looking for in an individual to bring them onto your work site? How do we then target training specific 
mm-hmm. to the sector, not necessarily an individual employer, but it may be TOSHA training um, because you have to have it before you can get on any work site. So those are the type of things that we're doing. For some people who have quite a few skills, it's a direct match. It's just simply getting them matched with the employer who's looking for somebody with that skill set. Right. Uh, for other folks, it may be, uh, you know, I would like to get in the construction industry, but I really haven't been exposed to it. So I need some exposure to the real world of real mm-hmm. world of work and what that really looks like. So we're looking at putting together training programs, shorter term training programs to get them ready to go into either entry level jobs in the construction industry or maybe an apprenticeship program uh, run by construction trades or, or ABC or home builders right. or uh, through a college of applied technology in Nashville. And I think it's important why the mayor and why we all are excited about this program going forward is the process to get to where we are now is something that hasn't happened in the past, I don't think in the last two or three decades. What we did was take both opponents and proponents of Amendment 3 for three and a half months, sat around a table within the mayor's office, 15 to 20 plus people, and really hash out two key things. What can we do to make our workforce development training piece better for both resident and employer? And then what can we do to make certain that we give residents access to local jobs? So we met no fewer than 10 times really hashing these things out. That's labor unions, that's uh, non-labor contractors, that was local community groups, that was the mayor's office, really sitting down and trying to work together. And what we came out with was a product that we know will stand the test of time irregardless of what the state does. And that was the main key factor. Irregardless of what the state will do, what product can we put together to benefit right. our community? I have to take a quick break. Before we go to break, though, this is important to Mayor Barry and also could also set the tone for her administration for how she wants to problem solve by bringing a whole different group of people together. Exactly. You know, to the table. Exactly. And I think we'll see more of that as it comes with some of the mayor's other uh, key priorities yeah. in the office as well. Take a quick break, everybody. 737-PLUS uh, is the phone number. Don't forget the 615 in front of it. 737-PLUS, if you'd like to join the discussion, we'll take a quick break. Open line will be right back.